We are live. We got the general. We got Dakota. We got Ian Green. I'd say Ian. Well, of course you're gonna say it, but you're probably like a top ten middleweight right about now. Ian, how you living this morning? I'm living pretty good. Get this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a West Coast guy. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, okay, I'm, okay. I'm a West Coast my bad, guy, bro. My bad. my bad. What's up? What's going on? Well, I'm. I'm gonna to join us this afternoon. Dakota wants me to start this interview with you, and you know everyone knows I I get my frog looking face throwing these heaters at you. Um, let's start with your division. Like your division kind of sucks right now. It's lacking a person that do- is a dominant figure. Janabek might be it, but I wanted to start with as a fighter's perspective. You're in the prime of your career, yet there's a lot of stagnation in this division. From an athlete standpoint, how do you stay motivated and how do you look at your division currently, given that basically guys just aren't fighting outside of Janabek? Well, to, to answer the first question, how I stay motivated, I, to be honest, I get anxiety when I'm not working. Like, I think me working hard, it's, it's, it's bigger than boxing. Me working hard is, is, is really for me. I kind of get anxiety when I'm not working with this when I'm when I'm, when I'm not uh work, when I'm not working. So I'm I'm always motivated 24/7. Like regardless of what's going on with the division or who's not fighting who, I'm always motivated because working out is kind of like therapy for me, you know. And um, so it's like the motivation comes from something internal. It's not coming from the 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 carrot at the end of the stick. Yeah, exactly. So. So that's that. So that's that. So that problem is will will forever be solved. And when it comes to the division, man, like me and Dakota, we were talking about it before. I think guys are just scared to 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 lose. Um, we uh, Floyd Floyd kind of kind of messed the game up where where you know everyone is protecting their O and. Yeah, I just think guys don't want to lose, and I also think the promoters also have plays a huge part in it. They don't want to they they want to protect their investment, you know. So it's 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 a lot of different factors that goes into it uh, with with the fighters, with the promoters, and just everything in general. Did but, you hear uh, the Michael Zarafa interview on Boxing Voice about uh, his current situation? No. So Zarafa alleged, we got to say alleged because it's boxing and it's whatever. He's saying he hasn't fought and he's the WBA number one contender. Are you, I think you're the five or six in the WBA, right? Um, I'm currently seven. Yeah, he's been, because I, he's been ranked number one forever. Like, so, number one for a while. so what happened is, I guess contractually, he signed a contract to be featured on the Danny Garcia Eris Landy Laura fight, and he couldn't take another fight outside of that bout. So, in essence, because that bout never came about, not just did the WBA, this sounds so, this is so boxing that I'm confusing myself, but this is actually the truth. Uh, good morning, G Funky. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. The truth is, Eris Landy Laura won and is the WBA champion. I believe he won the belt from Gary Spike O'Sullivan, which that alone is kind of like, how did that happen? Then that fight, they didn't have a title fight last year. And then Zarafa was mandated to fight, on, or not mandated, he signed a contract to fight on that card and had an exclusivity open-ended contract to not fight anywhere else, according to him. So in, sen- in a sense, two of the major figures of the WBA middleweight division are tied up waiting for a date that we don't even know if it's going to come. Yeah, that's, that, sucks. that sucks for me. <laughs> so <clears throat> I feel like the solution to that for me personally is to just fight the top contenders. That's really all I could do right now unless I get a call from a world champion, you know. But yeah, that's 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 a crazy situation. And um I think Lara he fought Tommy Lamana and won a title and then he fought O'Sullivan, like two years ago, he's just been holding on to it ever since. And another thing, well, Michael Zarafa, that's his, that's his name, right? That's how I pronounce his name. Yep. Yeah, yeah and it, it, we can uh, mispronounce he, names, bro. He, like, if it, it isn't, you know. Okay, cool. Well, I'm rooting for him. He better win because 
God forbid he loses, Larry won't defend that belt for another two, three years. Like the, the WBA, it'd be a wrap for us contenders. We have some people just have to go another route because the pace Larry was fighting in, if he beats the Farrell, he's not defending his title within six months, you know? So hopefully he get the job done, Jafaro, and he could defend the title against his contenders. Well, I, I want to ask you this, because you look at some of these guys, right, and Lara and Charlo come to mind. Charlo's fighting at catch weights above the weight. I believe Lara's trying to take fights at 55, 56 with a middleweight belt. How does that sit with you as a guy that's in your athletic prime? It sucks. It's like, I don't, it sucks. You see Lava, he's trying to pick on someone that's smaller. Charlo, it seemed like he just holding on to the belt. Like, he, he can't make the weight, but he just want to be still recognized as a champion. So I just look at it as, you know, they, they kind of being selfish, but hey, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not in these shoes or in these situations to really understand why they doing what they doing. I'm just, I just know what I'm trying to do and I'm trying to get those guys in the ring. And that's, that's more motivation right there also, knowing, like, all right, it's hard to even get the opportunity. So when you finally do get the opportunity, you got to take full advantage plus some of it. Because if not, man, who knows? You could be waiting for another two, three years. Like, it's really – especially in this division. So that's just all – which the, everything that you just explained was just another reminder that these opportunities don't come often. So make sure when it comes, take full advantage of it. Reminds me of Eight Mile right there, like Eminem at the stage at whatever club. Like just the the moment you have to grasp these. I guess for any successful person, there comes a moment where it's like you're going to be defined by one. Like your entire life in the next year or two is going to be defined by a twelve round fight, if you're lucky. If you're if you're lucky, which is yeah, yep, you're right. But I think also beyond being lucky, one of the advantages that I think that you have is you're a really good fucking fighter and you're not concerned about taking challenging fights. You're willing to take challenging fights. And I think on some level, just the fact that you're doing that can shake something loose in this division. No, nah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I believe so as well. I, mean, I want to me personally, like I said this before, like. I've been look. I look at Roy Jones. I look at Bernard Hopkins, even Andre Ward, and I want to bring it back to the B Hop days where he was undisputed champion and he was defending his belts, fighting all his contenders. The Roy Jones days, you know, like I want to. That's what I want to do. I want to become the man and fight everybody. I want to bring it back. I want to bring the middleweight back division back to where it needs to be. It's been real quiet <clears throat> for a while since like Triple G's been champion and stuff like that but no it's time to bring some some sauce back to the division somebody that's that's willing to fight anybody that's willing to put on great fights and i feel like i'm the man to do it so i just need the opportunity and that's why i'm open to fighting anybody i i I do feel like we're transitioning an era me and dakota talk about this that these young guys do want to fight that guys are looking less at that business route because they've seen guys like Cough, cough, Keith Thurman should be a Hall of Famer, but just was way too inactive. And I think history is going to be tough on his legacy. I think there's going to be a lot of guys in that post Floyd era who should be Hall of Fame boxers, but don't get in because their legacies are undefined. I truly think that boxing fans tune in to see people like you. They want to see someone that had adversity, that went through stuff because everyone has trials and tribulations in life. And to see you rise the ranks. I think that where boxing is messing up and not competing with college football, college basketball, these other sports, is we don't we don't value the underdog. If you win a fight, it's like you you're out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so weird. I swear they the UFC they love their underdogs. You know they love them. It's like I don't I don't know, and I, and and it's so crazy. I remember we spoke, we did an interview right after the ESPN fight. It was a badass performance. I had to I had to call you up. I'm like, this guy's great. Yeah, and you and you had asked me about Johnny Beck at the time. I didn't know who he was. But ever since you asked me about him, I've been like studying him. And um like he was a bad man then and he's even badder now. And that's those are the type of fights I want. 
like guys like that, you know. But yeah, it's 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 so crazy how with, with boxing, the guy with the like, I feel like my story can can motivate a lot of people. Not only am I having fights within the sport of boxing when it comes to like the inactivity and not getting the opportunities that I want, but I'm I'm having fights outside of the ring as well, like you know, dealing with uh, depression and losing my parents and just like a lot of things that people don't know behind the scenes, you know, that it it's hard enough to box with a clear mindset in general, but boxing with, with certain things that you're going through in life on your mind, it makes it so much tougher. But what will fuse me is knowing that when I become what I want to become, I will be, my story will be able to help someone else that's not that they don't have to box, but that's going through certain things, and they're and they say to themselves like, man, if he could do it and and lose this person and that person and and still become world champion and deal with the politics of boxing, then man, I could I could do this. I could whatever I'm dealing with, I could do it. You know, so yeah, it's crazy how like it's and I'm sure I'm not the only fighter that's that's going through certain things, that's pushing, that's winning, but no one knows about. It's just crazy how in our sport. Us fight, fighters like us are just swept under the rug, but there's certain other fighters that's, that hasn't really dealt with anything that's glorified for knocking out tomato cans. It's crazy. It's backwards. But, hey, that's 2024 for you. We might not have the biggest platform, but our platform is built around the truth, which mm-hmm. is weird in this day and age. It's also built around the fighters that fight and the underdogs. And I, I think that that's where the little engine you could. And you embody what we're about. Someone that's taken real fights, someone that might not have a perfect record, but you believe in yourself. Because I think the mark of a real fighter is, yeah, you lost a couple of fights, but you never thought you were any less of a fighter because you lost. Mm-hmm. You kept your, and I don't think anyone outside of fighters or people that live this sport understand in this Floyd era, it's so hard to not go into depression or believe you're anything less than, oh, I'm not Floyd with a loss. And you beat that burden. You beat an A-side fighter with a loss or two. That's difficult in this era. No, it's very, it's very difficult. Um, but I, the way I, I feel like the way I, I, I was able to accomplish that was kind of knowing. First of all, letting myself know losses don't define me. I, I took bigger losses outside the ring. That's one. And two, knowing when those losses did happen, the other person. Across me weren't wasn't the better fighter. I was the one that ultimately defeated me myself. So when I made certain changes, and and one of those main things was not to beat myself. Um, I'm, I've been proving myself right and also my parents right that I'm that guy. And yeah, I'm yeah, not gonna- in what ways would you say you you were beating yourself? You know what I mean? Like what what were those things that you feel like you've kind of changed up in the last few years um kind of not not working as hard as i should have uh being somewhat arrogant this is like some of the things from my first laws being kind of arrogant you know feeling like my shit don't stink you know uh not not instead of doing the six miles i'm supposed to i do three and look at the guy i'm fighting and thinking he's not he's not good enough and then with the second laws i just uh, it was more more of a like a, a like a mental thing. I kind of let things I was dealing with outside of the ring come inside of the ring. Like I didn't go there with the right mindset. I was I was focused on more other things more than I was in the fight. You know, so I knew I learned from both situations, and I and now I do know if I'm not there all the way mentally, I won't go into a fight. Or like I and if or if I'm if I'm not crossing every T and dying every I, I'm not going into I'm not going into the fight. And I've I've checked all of those boxes since I've since I made my return in twenty twenty because I had a three year layoff due to certain things outside of the ring. And by me checking all those boxes, everybody put in front of me, I knocked them off and that's gonna continue to happen. I guess I've got a question. It's not something probably people typically ask, but it's something I want to know because of me and I kind of deal with this. How did depression manifest itself for you? Because for me, it manifests in violence or frustration. And I never could put it together that that was actually depression until someone helped me understand that was depression. I thought that like I was just temperamental and frustrated. And it's actually been a, a 
thing I've worked to grow on is like when I'm depressed, I'm vulnerable to be irritable and stuff. And I thought that that was just, I'm in a bad mood. I'm curious as someone that's kind of battles depression at times, how did you notice like what depression was for you? Well, it was pretty, it was pretty clear for me. It wasn't kind of like something I kind of knew what it was from, from the get go because I, I had lost my dad in 2015 and it, it hit me hard, but I always had my mom to, to like, I, I had my mom to fall back on. Like she, she, she didn't, she softened the blow for me. She was, she was there for me every step of the way of losing my dad. Like I, she was a person I could call. She was like somewhat of my therapist, you know? And three years later I lost her. And um, to in a, in, a, in a crazy accident, like it wasn't like I was able to brace for my dad. My dad had cancer, and I and we was able to brace for it. Me and my dad had conversations on his deathbed, you know. And he kind of like it was the transition wasn't as hard because he he prepared me for it, and my mom prepared me for it. But my mom, it was it was just one. I spoke to her one night, and the next day she was gone. So it was like something I couldn't like brace for, and. Uh, after I just like I wasn't eat oh I like I couldn't eat I couldn't sleep I just didn't want to be bothered with anyone I didn't want to talk to anyone I didn't want to train and after a while I started to eat and I saw all I wanted to do was eat I was I was damn near I was a heavyweight I was like two two hundred and some change and I just didn't I didn't want to I I, I didn't see the point of living at one point so I kind of I kind of knew what like I was depressed as soon as I became depressed and um yeah I, I, um once i once i kind of figured out what well, what was i doing while i was depressed i had to reverse it and kind of do the opposite to get out of that uh, mindset mindset so what was the comeback because like i mean like there's a lot of people listening to the show and by a lot i mean probably three to four Mm -hmm. And uh, they they might be sitting here and going, well, I'm overeating. I'm not following my dreams. I'm a failure. I don't have enough money. We all have insecurities, right? Maybe mm -hmm. look at that. You bounce back. You're the person that made it. There are a lot of people, as I said, three or four, listening mm -hmm. to this show that have insecurities, yet you battled your insecurities and beat it. And now you're very close to accomplishing a dream. What flipped the switch for you? Well, let me correct you. Right now it was three or four, but one day it's gonna be millions to see this video. That's one. But two, um, what? All right. So what flipped the switch for me was like being that it was like grief based. I just knew that they wouldn't want me. They wouldn't want to see me that way. You know. And also, boxing is, 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 has some has been something I've been doing since I was nine, ten, and my mom and my dad told me I'd become world champion. And I, I I used to hear that voice in my head, like you know, I can't let it end like this. And um, so what I did, so that was that's kind of what kick started everything. But for people who don't have that voice in their head. The main thing is just to take it one day at a time and, like, don't look at the long run. Like, if I would have – when I was shelved and I, and my mom died and I didn't have I, – I was all for three years. No one didn't want to help me or work with me. And I would and I was in my head like, oh, how if I, if I was thinking to myself, man, it's going to be possible to be world champion. How can I get to a world title? I wouldn't be here today. I'm not, you're not supposed to think that way. You're supposed to think about what's in front of you. Like, all right, you know what? Let me just see if I can get a fight in Mexico just to get my career back up and running. Let's just go from there. So that's just, an, that's just symbolic to what I'm trying to say right now. Take the first step. Don't even think about the long run. Just get up and let's, let's just take the first step to getting better. And whatever that is, you know, act on it. So... Yeah, uh, like for you, like all right, you know, you 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 resort to violence or whatever the case may be, you know, when you, when you and you're irritable, you should start thinking like, all right, you know what? Whenever I I get the urge to do something violent, you no, know, let me just take a deep breath, and let me let me just start taking deep breaths at that time, and 
what I like to do as a hobby. I like to read. Let me let me pick up a book or let me go for a jog. Just things like that. Just kind of focus on the small things, and then sooner or later, those small those small bricks will build a humongous house, and then you'll look and you won't even realize that you built the house. So like I I I just been taking it step by step, and I'm like I'm I'm getting closer and closer to my goals. So what I'm hearing. And I like what you're hearing because you just gave me a therapy session and I've been told I need one. So I'm going to say <laughs> the general gave me a therapy session is set achievable goals. So don't go to be a world champion. Set a goal of going to the gym. Mm. Set a goal of hitting the bag four, time, four rounds today. Set goals you can accomplish and keep setting accomplishable goals and maybe slightly elevate until you're at the dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's like perfection's the enemy of good. You know what I mean? In a sense, where if you're holding yourself to that standard of perfection or to, you know, if I'm not training to be a world champion, what's the point? Kind of defeats the, yeah, I should just go for a jog. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like little things like that. So in my view, perfection is often the enemy of good because it just prevents you from taking that those baby steps because in your mind, like, oh, the baby steps aren't enough. But that is kind of what gets you to, to where you want to go. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly. Exactly. No, I agree hundred percent. Okay, now um what's your current promotional situation? I'm with Don King. Okay. Yeah, I'm and with DK. Um after I, I I thought I'd have interest from top rank after I beat after I did the their guy the way I did him, but um nothing happened and I was um I, I kinda knew in the back of my mind. Yeah, I, I believe in myself, of course, but I'm, I have no I, at the time no promoter, no manager. I can't keep taking B side fights. I, like I, I'm gonna end up getting robbed sooner or later, you know. So I was just uh, DK was the only guy that was interested, and he he gave me an opportunity. And it's not what people say; it was really on paper. So everything was right on paper, in my opinion. And I'm um, so far, he's like been living up. To what he's promised, and so, and I and I appreciate people that pre appreciate me. You know, I'd rather be somewhere that's like, all right, people aren't the biggest fan of him, but when it's all said and done, he appreciate me for who I am, rather than like a huge promotional company, like like PBC, where like eighty percent of their fighters aren't even fighting. That's up and coming. Like if I was with PBC, I'd probably be show for a while. They only focus on like their big name fighters, you know. So I'd rather be somewhere where I'm appreciated to begin with. So, but I'm I'm signing with Don King. How big is it that Broner's with Don? Because I feel like if Broner gets a big fight, you by being with Don will probably get a big opportunity on that type of card. Yeah, no, I think it's a plus. Like it ain't because he's a when it's all said and done, people could say what they want about him, but technically. He's like top five biggest names in the sport. Not like biggest. I'm, we just talking about name, star power. Top five, like when it, all right, it's Canelo. You got Tank. You got Ryan. Um, I'm talking about as far as like name and popularity wise. Like the average, the average Joe. If you ask him, do you know about uh, NUA? They're not gonna know. They're not gonna know. But nine times out of ten, they know about Adrian Broner. You know I mean? Even though it's probably for something negative, no matter what, good attention, bad attention, it's attention. So I feel like it's a positive that he's with uh, Don King because it can shed some light on his his promotional company, which ultimately will shed light on me. But to be honest, I, to be honest though, I could care less about the the lights and I I just want to fight. Like I, I'm fine with being the world champion and nobody knowing me. I just want to beat the best and take care of my family. They, y'all, they could have all the fame and all of that. I want to fight. The, I want to prove myself right. I got. I, I, it's deeper than just me being a star and stuff like that. No, I want to prove myself and my parents above and my family. I want to make everybody proud. I want to do that. And then everything else, whatever comes with it, I'm grateful for. But that's what I really want to do. I want to. I want to prove to these guys that they aren't the, they aren't the best. I am. 
So I'm going to ask you a question, and this is I want this to the fighter answer question, right? We're not going phony baloney. This is the fighter. Are the guys in the middleweight division the guys that are going to be there for the next five, four or five years? Or do you think like a guy like Janny Beck is going to be at super middleweight sooner than later? Adamis is going to chase fights. Do you think these are the names that are going to be in your division or it's going to be a new face that's coming like yourself, like Elijah Garcia or some of these others? Or do you think someone from 154 will emerge? What do you view as middleweight right now? Do you think those are the guys or do you think there's guys that we don't know yet? Mm. I mean... I see, I see Johnny. Well, see, like right now, I'm, I'm to, to be honest, I see me, I see me emerging and me being that guy. You know, I don't know what Johnny Beck or any of the other champions are gonna do after I beat him. I don't know if they're gonna move up or if they're gonna go down or whatever. But I know I'm gonna be the guy that's gonna hold all the weight, and I can't really speak for nobody else because all I do is see me. I see me. I see me being on top. I just need the opportunities, and I'm just preparing for the opportunities. Even though I may not see them now or I may not know when they're coming, I'm going to always be prepared. But I don't know uh, who – I don't know if these guys will still be around. Would they want to be around after after tasting the ass whooping for me? I doubt it. So we don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah, I wanted to ask you this because I know we talked about it briefly, but there there are some really talented young middleweights coming up right now that are like a couple of years younger than you, right? You, there's mm-hmm. Elijah Garcia, there's Troy Isley, there's mm-hmm. Joe James, Javier Martinez. There's some guys, you know what I mean? And they're very talented. I think those are some big fights in the future. Even though you're basically at the contender slash championship level, are you willing – to fight one of those guys to get the exposure and to separate yourself uh, amongst the, the the top guys of this moment. Yeah, if it if it makes sense, of course. Like I, I think most of them guys are like the top rank. Um, I know Troy Ozzy's the top rank in the in the Southpaw guy. Then Joe Sean James. I don't know. I think they had like a draw or something like that. Yeah, Joe Sean's promoter agnostic. Elijah's with PBC. Yeah, Elijah. With, see, out of all of those fighters, the one, only one I'm really kind of interested in would be Elijah because yeah, he's young, and but he's ranked high in every sanctioning body. Like he's the only one that's ranked high. In, if, if if they were all ranked high, if they were all ranked in the sanctioning bodies, I, I would want to fight them because technically, like they're not a prospect; they're a contender. So right, well, make and a Elijah. case. Like Elijah is a friend of the program. Make a case, like make make the fight. You know he doesn't have a fight right now. I don't think make the case. Yeah, I think he's number two in the WBA as well. Nah, so my team we making calls and I'm fighting anybody that's ranked above me. So, um, yeah, like I like I said, any I'm open to fighting anybody. Um, it just have to, as long as it's making good sense. You know, I don't like I I'm done fighting the like I fought a guy. Um, in January of last year, a guy named Alex Castro, 11 and 0 from Colombia. No one knows who he is. No one ever heard of him. And I suffered a headbutt in the first round, and I had a crazy cut over my eye. And we were, he was like, it was his opportunity, you know. It was his opportunity to to be get higher in the rankings and, and, and to become a name. And he had everything to gain and none to lose, you know. But I, I still got the job done with one eye. But it's like I didn't gain from it. Like, what did I get from taking that tough fight? Where you got guys that's ranked higher than me that's take that's fighting to like bombs, like tomato cans. So it was like and now I, I learned from that fight. But then what you like, get in is you get credibility. I definitely get what you're saying, but I think with like boxing people you get credibility when you that's why that's why guys like us fuck with you because you, you're willing to take those kind of fights well you're but, the truth yeah but we know you'll put your skills on the line like i was going to read this off 2021 you fight guy eight and one in dubai so you're fighting a layover i'm sure that was a crazy experience then you beat her coward undefeated you fight anthony link who people don't remember him but he had a crazy fight with ricardo williams back in the day on andre ward chad dawson yes i'm that much of a nerd but Anthony Link isn't some like crappy fighter. That's a tough barroom physical guy that gives anybody hell. Alexander Castro, as you said, 
biggest day of his life. You got to get motivated for an 11 0 guy that you don't even know who he is. Probably hard to get tape. Vaughn Alexander, the guy that beats every guy on a club show that's not prepared, and he gave Janabek a hard fight, which makes me almost wonder if you're positioning for a Janabek fight because you fought Vaughn Alexander, who infamously was the hardest fight of Janabek. You're basically since 2021, you haven't even had a tune-up fight. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. And in and, and 2021, if you really look, um, 2017 was like my last real fight. And then in 2020, 2021, those were like first round knockouts. So they, they were like 30 seconds each fight. So I didn't really get my feet wet. That ESPN fight was the real fight where I was able to really start getting my feet wet. But yeah, I've been, I've been, and that's that's what I'm trying to say to you guys. Like I've been taking these tough fights where I don't want to say no names, but I'm looking at these contenders and it's like they're ranked above me and they, they're not taking the, the type of fights I'm taking. And it's like, what am I doing wrong? Like it, it makes you. I'm I'm human. It makes you wonder. Like, what's the point of fighting this tough fight if it's not gonna get me nowhere? Like, if I'm, I'm just being this. To be honest, I think I think it's, it's kind of a bad thing to to beat a lot of good guys up and coming because it makes the guys at top like reluctant to to step in the ring with you. Well, what's that? There's a Mozzie rap song they play in the gym, and they say it's a favoritism game nowadays. And I think that sums up this conversation where, like you said, if you beat too many good guys, people go, oh, man, nobody knows who he is, but he's a tough fight. <laughs> how do we yeah. avoid him? How do we, how do we price ourselves out? How do we give him short money and hope he doesn't say yes and then say, oh, we turned down the fight? And and on top of that, I have um, an infamous – and somewhat like uh, my promoter has a stereotype around his name, so that doesn't even make it easier. But you know, uh, one way or another, it's gonna. I'm, I'm, I know my time will come, and I'm gonna be ready. The so. chat is asking, "Are you related to Danny Green?" I have no idea who that is. <laughs> okay, so the answer is probably not, but maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer for you guys. <laughs> Danny Green's an Australian cruiserweight, so I'm gonna go with no. And he's also white. Yeah. So I mean, is I mean, we'll say maybe, but probably not for the sake of legality. In case something comes out, um, I, one thing I'm interested in is there a movie or anything you find spiritual inspiration for this part of the grind of your career? Do you find find yourself rewatching a movie, a piece of music, like anything maybe away from boxing that motivates you right now? Yeah, that's a good question, and I got a great answer. Nothing that's um that's physically real. Like all right, so this thing that motivates me, it isn't here yet. The movie that motivates me is my movie that I'm gonna like write and produce when I'm world champion that I think about today is what motivates me. Like I could I could picture it being made of and, and someone watching it and seeing like my story, like was what, how, what I've been going through and stuff like that, and being real motivated. And I I watch that movie in my head all the time, and that motivates me. And I want to make that movie and and that and that and and what I imagine into a reality. And that's what really like helps me get up and and do what I gotta do because I know I'm 150 percent sure that movie was gonna save lives. So. That's what that's the movie that motivates me. My future movie that I'm gonna write about myself, and it's gonna be in theaters everywhere, and probably Michael B. Jordan is gonna play me or something like that. It's gonna be better than Creed. It's gonna be a great adult movie. You'll see. What What would the artistic direction for that movie be like? What would you pay like? Maybe let's not say like story wise, but let's say like the way the movie looks, the visual element. What would you say would take a big interest in like the way you would have it shot? Like, what do you envision it looking like? Um, you know, it's, it's going to be obviously it's going to be based on a true story, and uh, wait, all right. So wait, we'll kind of break um break down the question one more time. Okay, like, so like like for me in my head, I'm kind of getting a cross between of like a boxing movie. But then for some weird reason, I'm also like thinking that the film is going to have like these long smoke filled shots like rounders and that it's going to have an element of King of New York to it. Not the violence, but it's just going to be shot okay. in the, over the top, like almost 
relatable to any one fashion. It's, it's, it's definitely going to be a boxer movie, but it's going to be mixed with like real life like problems that us um, young black African uh, young, us young African Americans deal with on a day to day basis. Like it's gonna be like all in one a sports movie and also you know it's a, a kid in the hood that has a dream mixed into it. You sounds know, like a, sounds like a Spike Lee joint, bro. Yeah, well, yeah. So you know, and it's gonna teach it's gonna teach a lot of young adults how to overcome uh, trials and tribulations and. It's going to be a great end. It's going to show, you know how in movies where like when they show the credits, they show the real pictures and they show like things like that. It's going to show me holding my world title and it's going to show a bunch of things. It's going to show the real pictures of my family, my parents, me and that, all of that. Like it's going to be amazing. You'll see. Well, I think that's, 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 that's the story. That's, yeah, that's the movie that gets me up, that, that inspires me. And that's going to be the movie that's going to inspire so many up and coming fighters and fighters that's not even born yet in the future. They when 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 they're asked that question, they're gonna be like, my favorite movie is called it's called General. Like, man, that movie's so inspiring. Like that guy came back from so much. And he accomplished so much in the sport. It's like, yeah, if he could do that, then I know I could do it. You know. So, Can I suggest a an alteration in the name? Why not the Ring General? Because I think there's a lot of movies probably called General and you might be competing with the war movie demographic in terms of algorithm. No, yeah, you're right about that. I, I'm going to add a twist to it. And, and, and it's, so, it's a little crazy because the movie going to be so cool. It's going to have so much spunk and pizzazz because I signed with Don King. So we're going to have a Don King actor in there acting like him. And I think it's, it's, it's going to be a great It's going to be a great movie. Like It's going to be an amazing movie. I, I'm going to make more money from that movie than I am in, in my boxing career as what? an undisputed champion. What I'm hearing is you're living your own movie and and your motivation is the creation of a piece of art. So it's not just your career. It's like you want this journey to be a piece of art that lives on and is timeless. And that's your motivation is to be a part of history beyond the sport of boxing. Yes. I didn't endure all of this pain just for it to go on the wayside, just for for nothing. I believe well, I, I, I I felt this pain so a lot of people can um can kinda like I, I, I say I, I kinda I wanna say in some way, some way, shape or form that I'm making a way for someone that's dealing with something that and, and that's lost and don't know where to go. I didn't feel this pain just to feel this pain. I, my mom didn't die, my dad didn't die just to die. It's a reason behind everything, so um, just, just um, like a couple of days ago, I lost a friend to suicide, and I, like I, I don't know, like that, that's that's been bothering me, and I wish I could have, you know, spoke to him and just kind of dive more deep, to, like with him about what I've been going through, and that probably would have stopped him from doing it. Um, I think Dakota, I think you know him. I knew him. Yeah, he he's been he's coming to the gym a lot. Um, in East Hanover, K- Kenneth, he's a writer also. No, nah, I don't think I met him. You, um, you, you, no, nah, you, you, you definitely met him in the gym before. He used to come like almost every day, but um, but yeah, he he, he committed suicide a couple of days ago, and I just want to stop. I want to, I like my, I want my life to be that that piece of art that's gonna live on forever, and that's gonna prevent someone from doing that a hundred years from now. You know, I'm not here just to win money and and say I'm a world champion. It's a lot bigger than that. That's that's why Ali is gonna live forever. You know, it's bigger than the money and it's bigger than all of that. Ali will be will live forever. I want to be one of them one of them guys. Like, not because of what I like accomplish from like in the sport but is what the sport is the, the boxing is just a seed and and i'm playing the seed to grow to a big humongous tree and that's going to blossom and it's going to help a lot and feed a lot of people basically it's, it, you say you're a fighter i hear that you're a teacher it sounds like you want to inspire and lead and i think that most leaders are teachers so it seems like that your end goal is going to be to help others more so than to be someone that like people look back and go that was the great i think that you're gonna have a legacy that you want to craft that's bigger than boxing 
Oh. We lost him. Did we lose oh, the general? We lost the general. Maybe. <laughs> Great interview, though. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe. Oh, the general's back. Okay. General's back. Okay, yeah. I don't know. I lost service. What, was, what were you saying? I apologize. It just, it just feels like you're a teacher. You're a leader. And that what a lot of people are looking at with your career, they're looking at it all wrong. They're looking at just the boxing component where what you're trying to do is you're trying to be much bigger than just a boxer. You're trying to help the helpless. You're trying to be the voice of the voiceless. Mm -hmm. And I think that that part of your story is actually the most interesting part. And yet that's the part that I don't think is told very much. And aside from being like just having a motivation outside of personal gain and personal riches, like that shit is fucking refreshing, dog. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, for sure. Yeah. It's so many different components to it. Like, I I also want to teach, like, athletes and fighters in general, like, don't let a loss define you. Get up and keep keep going, just in general. Like, it's not over. It may feel like it's over, but it's not over. I also I, – there's so many messages I want to send. But I feel like the message won't stick as well unless I become a world champion. Me, personally, I feel like I already won. I feel like – where I'm at today, I would never, um, I would have never imagined it ever after I got that call about my mom when I was depressed. And uh, you could never tell me I would have been like top 10 in the world uh, in in talks with fighting world champions. And you, you, you could never tell me that. I thought it was, I thought it was over. So, um, like I said, there's so many different components to, the, to my story that I want to get out. And I just want to like show the world and fighters and people in general. Don't let a loss define you. That's just all that's going to do is make you stronger. Think about it. Before, when I lost, when I did lose, I had everything I needed. I had a, a manager that was behind me that I had my parents alive. Like, and that's when I took my losses, you know, and I had to go through some real losses to not lose. That Now, this is why I'm not losing because I lost before. So, and there's some people... When they lose, they think that's it's over. That's the end. That's just the beginning. When I lost back, that it was the beginning. When I lost my parents, it was just the beginning. Now the story, now the story starts, and it's it, it's not the end when you lose. Basically, that's like the message I want to get out there, and and I have to show it with what I'm doing in the ring with, against these top guys. I love how that's the always the underdog always quotates the top guys because there's like this underlying resentment that they don't get those opportunities. Um, Combat Sports Me is asking: Is are you related to Danny Green, the basketball player who once played for the San? Oh, like oh for the Spurs? No, <laughs> no. I do you have a so good jump shot? Can you shoot a three? Yeah, hell yeah, I can do everything. I'm athletic. I'm athletic. You can dunk. Um, I can tap. Okay, so. I want you to Blake Griffin hand in the hoop. We'll have to have a three-point contest someday, bro. Yo, you're going to get smoked, Dakota. I bet you're uh, I mean, nah, I'm just can't. saying. I just – I just nah, – nah, Yeah, shoot. You're other bugging, than, bro. No, other than boxing, bugging. I play I play basketball. I play football. I'm in track. Like, I did I did, a, I did a lot. So okay, what, what position in football? You look <laughs> like a middle <laughs> linebacker. No, nah, I was – so it was my freshman year. I was a fullback. Okay. Yeah, I was that, fullback. That's I, one I, one I like most- the that's an undesirable position, bro. Yeah, I like to run, so yeah, I was I was full of that, but only lasted a year. I didn't like the um, we had a the football field we practiced at. They used to make us do crab walks every day, and it was geese shit all over the field, bro. And every day after practice, I'd have a bunch of geese shit under my fingernails. It used to be freezing cold. I'm like, you know what? I don't think maybe this sport ain't for me. I think I like boxing better in a nice warm gym where I won't get in trouble for a teammate not doing what he's supposed to do. So now I got to do crab walks and and and, and he's shit. put my hands into shit. He's shit. <laughs> that's wild, bro. Yeah, so. I mean, that's that stuff you can't make up, bro. That's that stuff like you can't make those stories up. That's you had to live through it. I've ran out of my questions. My only last question is, if you watched Archer Better Beef, what did you think of it? Because that can parallel is the conversation me and Dakota I saw, were. I, I saw a glimpse. I saw from, like, the fourth round on. I ain't really – but I saw he was kind of boxing a little bit more. He wasn't 
as aggressive as he let the knockout come to him. He looked he looked good. He looked real good. Um He's a smart fighter, bro. He's a very smart destructor. He looks solid. Yo, so he's only six feet. He's he's five eleven. Wow, I'm six one, six feet. He looks like a, a tank. Like he's he's like a brick wall. Well, he was fighting the Usyk in the amateurs, bro. Like he was a heavyweight in the amateurs. Okay. No, yeah, he he no, he did his thing. Um yeah, him and him and uh Bavol, that's gonna be a good fight. I won't pick him like automatically over Bavol. I, I don't know who will win. Because Bavol got some skills too. Um, so yeah. That's that's gonna be a great fight. My only downside to better be is because I gotta be a negative Nancy. He did a look a little slower and a little older in this fight, and that's like kind of a duh dude. He's thirty nine, but like did he he's not, to me, he's not as fluid as he used to be. Like early on, yeah, he's getting warm, but like there to me, he has amazing foot pressure, so he's able to cut the ring off and make up for it because he knows that. But I do think he's slowing a little bit in terms of fluidity based on age. Well, mm-hmm. we'll have to get we'll have to get more into that. But as we wrap up with Ian here, Ian, I just want to know, bro, do you have any sense of what is going to be next immediately for you? Obviously, you got bigger vision, but you know what the next step in in your journey is. God willing, it's it's, it's one of them six guys that's above me, or because I'm ranked number seven. So uh, hopefully, uh, is I think I think it'll be a contender. I think I think it's going to be a name for sure. Um, that that it put me in position for a world title shot. I don't think this is gonna just be like a Vaughn or a up and coming prospect or nothing like that. It's gonna be somebody that's that's considered a level above me. Do you have anyone specific that you and your team are targeting? Um, yes, but I can't I can't I can't say it up here. You can't get in trouble. <laughs> you can't get in trouble. But you know, hopefully if it works out, because we're, we're we're talking to people. Man, some great news coming for sure. Okay, well, don't get the fight, you guys. And this is a fight you guys are gonna love. Our good friend Joshua Cabrera, brother of Giovanni Cabrera, wants to know where do you train out of? I'm in um, East Hanover, New Jersey, and I'm also I, I'm also in Patterson, New Jersey. I train out of two different gyms. I train about two, three times a day. So early in the morning, I train in East Hanover, and then late at night, I go to Patterson. So. Okay. Well, if you want to stick around, you're more than welcome. If you want to take off, well, you can do that too. Me and Dakota are going to entertain the fight fans like we do on Sunday afternoons and talk a little bit of the fights that happened last night um, and preview a fight card that I don't think people are that excited about next week. It's a good fight, but it's, I think a lot of people are going to see it. So, Who's fighting? Michaela Mayer versus Natasha Jonas. It's a good fight, but it's happening in the middle of the afternoon or early evening. It's going to be hard to find for a lot of people. And I also think that there's a little bit of a bias against women's boxing where a lot of fans just aren't as interested in those fights as probably they should be. I have a question, and I'm I'm going to leave. I wish I thought about that Mbili guy. That's his name? They offered me that guy. Look. Let me start because, look, he's here for a fun time, not a, a long time. Mm. You can't get hit like that and say we're going to have a 10-year career. He's get, The clock just started on how long he can be at the high level. He's yeah. going to get hurt bad because he's got no defense, but he's very dangerous because he's willing to punch and come forward. So on any given night, he could beat a more talented fighter, I believe. But I, I'm a firm believer you just can't take flush punches over yeah. and over and over and he's be like, like a, he's kind of like a David Lemieux type. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. he, he's a free swinger, he hits real fucking hard, but there's gonna be just somebody, whoever it is, that wait, does he does he hit hard? He didn't knock out Vaughn. I think no, I do think he hits hard. I think Vaughn's a tough fucking guy, and that's why I also you know think but, this is just me and I'm interrupting because I'm rude. I think there's, he, he has no change of speed, and I think guys can settle right. in no matter how hard you hit. If they if you're throwing all fastballs and you're not throwing the change and the curve and the slider, I think that, like, relatively speaking, if you stand in front of him, he's got crack. But I think that he doesn't have the nuance to throw punches guys won't see coming, and that's the issue with a guy at that level. 
He can't yeah, walk. No, he's, not set, he's not. He's not setting up any of his punches. They're just coming right hook, left hook over. I think. Head. I think he. I think he is strong enough though that if you give him that that brief moment to get some offense off, he'll take it, and it's not going to feel good. I just think mm-hmm. that. When we talk about at 168, David Morrell, Diego Pacheco, Canelo, Benavidez, I just don't think he's – Even Berlanga, bro. Berlanga has a a level of thinking that I don't – like I Mm -hmm. see this guy coming through the front door, left hook body, right hook head. Then he'll reverse it. Right hook body. Like a a Mike – well, like a lesser version of Mike Tyson. You could tell that like he watched a lot of Tyson and Tyson's probably his favorite fighter. He just doesn't have those athletic bursts that Tyson had that made Tyson so frustrating. Like, he can't close the gap ridiculously fast. I don't see the head movement either, to be honest. He seems like he stays pretty still after he's punching. So if he can, if he's in with somebody that's physically durable and smart enough to be able to handle that, which I don't think a lot of guys are going to be. I think unless you're the absolute top of the division, he's fucking guys up. He's kind of like Kyle yeah. Smith to me. I, I, I would like to see him in, in, in that tall kid that you guys mentioned, the uh, Pacheco. Yeah, Pacheco. It's a great yeah. fight. Yeah, him, yeah, that that'd be a good fight. Um, yeah, because the top guys, Benavidez and Morel, nah. We're gonna pick somebody like Boo Boo Android. I just think that and Billy's gonna have a hard time catching somebody. That's yeah, I, not, I think he has too much skill for him as well. I think, he's gonna hit him too clean. Yeah, I, I think he, he should get. Like another up and coming one sixty eight pounder, like a Pacheco or a, a Berlinga. Berlinga is pretty good. I like I, I I spar him a couple times. Well, yeah, he's a good fighter too. That'd be a good fight. I mean, even like a Dervianchenko, right? No, like, I, I think, think no, I, no. I I think Dervianchenko beats him. He has. But no, I'm saying, but like he's an older guy, right? And at a certain point, boxing's not charity. You're an Olympian. You got a good record. Like yeah. this is what's wrong with boxing is like you got your eighteen and zero, but we gotta hold your hand. Okay, yeah. you're an alpha fighter, you're an Olympian, but you're highly beatable because you just stand in front of guys and punch because you really, really enjoy just beating a guy up. But that style doesn't win at the world class level. At a certain point, does Michigan football win the national championship by just fight playing a team that they can win? No, you have to go through a system. I think part of the problem is these. The institution is we look at sometimes as astute fans, who can he beat rather than just put him in a fight with one of the best guys. And then he's got to sink or swim. And if he can't adjust, guess what? It's great. You had a career. I think that's what holds up the visions is who's the most beatable guy. Christian and Billy can fight like when they, when, so I'm trying to kill that talk. I know you're not saying it, but that's just how I feel. No, yeah, no, I agree. I, I wish, I hope they, they do like somewhat of a, they need to start doing the them, the them series, the Super Six series again. They need to start doing that again, man, and, and like do one for each weight class, so fighters are forced to. It did feel like those tournaments sort of forced the top, the hand of the top of the division to just sort of treat the sport like a sport. Hey, yeah, well, man. Observation about the general Ian Green, uh, our guy Josh Cabrera says you fight like a right-handed Ryo, Jose Val, uh, Ryo. Jose Valenzuela. He just knocked out Little B Hop. Oh, he's southpaw. Uh, I don't know. Is he Dakota? I think he is actually. Oh. Yeah, because I, so. yeah. I think he knocked B Hop out with a right hook, and it was a lead. Punch. I saw. I saw the knockout. I never saw. Um. I ain't, I never, but I haven't seen. I saw that clip. That clip was viral, but I never watched him fight. So, but um, yeah, I don't know if I could agree with him or not because I never watched him. But yeah, I don't thanks know. For, I thanks just, for looking me up. Appreciate it. I think you have elements of it, but to me, you remind me of like a cerebral East Coast fighter that comes along, like the Bernard Hopkins. Like, there's always. Um, these real tough, gritty East Coast guys that seem to only come from the East Coast. Like, there's a level of toughness meets skill meets just bad. Let me, let me tell you something. This is, I'm, I swear, I'm not saying that I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm a chameleon in the ring. I can really outbox one of the uh, yeah, best boxers. I can, I'm a great boxer. I, that's, that's, that's my fundamentals. I could box. I could outbox anybody I want if I really want to. But 
like I said, I'm a chameleon, and if you want to fight, we can fight. I can, I can out fight you as well, you know. And I got everything, and I said it before. I'm gonna say it again. I have the beard, and it's, it's on camera. Look, look it up. For like my last couple fights, I've been hit real hard. I have the beard. Not once in my career have I ever been dropped. I, I, not, I've never been dropped in sparring. When I had when when I lost in 2017 and and the ref stopped the fight, well the doctor stopped the fight. She just felt like I was taking too much punishment, like I wasn't. But I didn't ever I didn't even drop. So I have a beard, you know. Um, like I like I said, I have the skills to box. I have the 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 skills to bang. Whatever, and I have I have the dog. Like I, I'm a dog, so I'm a chameleon. Whatever you want to do, I, I'm a I'm gonna adapt to it. So like I, I I'm real versatile. Like I. I got some Floyd in me, and I got some us uh, who who whoever walks forward. I got some Benavidez in me as well. It, it just depends. So I got some, some Matias in me. If I if I if I want to take it there, I could be Matias or I could be Floyd. I could do it all. I practice everything in the gym for every situation, literally every situation. So I'm a, I'm a chameleon, and I'm gonna continue to show that like for whoever I fight. Well, here's the line for the article I'm going to write about you from this interview. I think you're a Carhartt jacket. And you might say, why are you a Carhartt jacket? Well, that's the most versatile jacket. You can yeah, use yeah. it on a, on a hot day or you can <laughs> use it on a cold day. It's the most versatile piece of clothing. To me, you're the Carhartt clothing of boxing. You could use it for a run. You could use it to stay warm. You could wear it on a on a warm day to go to the gym. You, you can have, wear it on a date. You, you can wear it on a date. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's why I say you're the Carhartt jacket of boxing because people don't always think that a Carhartt jacket is a universal. But guess what? If you have a Carhartt jacket in your closet, I bet you wear it more than a designer one. Yeah, and, and guess what? And this is another thing. I want the big bad wolves. That's another quality I think these fighters don't have. I want to. I want the. I want the. the who who y'all saying the best? I want him. I want, he got let him show me. Like, I, I can't wait to to get in that position where I could like expose a lot of these so called. Yeah, these great fighters. Well, it it was great catching up with you, Ian, and we both consider you a friend of the program. So if you ever need a platform or anything, you're always welcome to jump on here. Um, you're always welcome to hassle the comment section to terrorize people or just come on the on our program and put up with us. No, I appreciate it, man. And um, thank you guys for having me. Uh, Dakota, thanks for reaching out to me, man. I appreciate yes, it. Lukey, man, thanks for reaching out to me back in 2021. Um, I just watched the interview a couple of days ago. That was a dope interview. Did I do a good job? I, I literally just feel like I'm talking in a closet some days. So I, I hope I don't go back and watch those and they're bad. But no, nah, you nah, deserve nah. more coverage, bro. And I'm glad. We're all rising up the ranks together. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I was about to say, to go. you stepped it up. Them real, I see them reels. They look real HD now, <laughs> you know? Nah, you definitely yeah, you definitely stepped it up from 2021. And, you know, like I told you back in 2021, I, I'm going to step it up. And I've, I've been stepping it up. It's it's slowly but surely. So we just got to keep, keep grinding. And thank you, guys. Well, I appreciate people like you because you know I'm grinding. I know you're grinding. And it's like it's hard to grind when there's no major backing. I'm the, yeah. we are independent of this That's our whole life, brother. And yeah. you're the independent of boxing. And I think that anyone that grinds independently respects the grinders because it's so easy to say, you know what? I don't have the viewership. Screw this. I'm not going to do my Sunday podcast with Dakota. The money's not right. When I know there's a, at least a hundred or two hundred people who really love this show. And they want it on Sundays. And as we talked about with depression, that might stop one person from making a bad decision because they tune in once a week. It sounds foolish, but those mm -hmm. are the things that push me, keep me going. And I, I think it's just as important to honor those fighters who are facing those same difficult decisions. And you're risking your freaking life, bro. I'm just sitting on my ass being a jackass talking about the sport I love. <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, but. It's, 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 it's beauty in a struggle, bro. This is, this is beautiful to me. Like, is 
it's going to make everything all worth it. Like, yeah, it sucks. Don't get me wrong. It's, it, it fucking sucks. But when you really think about it, it's, it's, it's beautiful at the same time. It's, 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 I, it's, 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 it's beautiful to me. So it, nothing, nothing worth having comes easy. And there's never a good story or a good movie without some type of plot or like trial or tribulation. Like, it would. Who wants to watch a movie when it's just a bunch of flowers and everything? Everything good is happening for everyone. Losers. Like, no, one, no one wants to watch that shit. That shit is boring. You gotta people have with some, no sauce, huh? Yeah, like people with have, no sauce, bro. Losers. No, nah, exactly. You gotta have some type of struggle. So yeah, you grinding for five to six or seven, however long it takes for you to get to where you want to get to. That's what's gonna make that position you're gonna be in that much sweeter and it's going to let you know the things you need to do to stay there. That's another thing. Cause when you're just given something, you don't appreciate it as much, you know? So it's like, it's, 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 it's beauty in the struggle. All I'll say is this is the boxing gym's number one choice. The boxing gyms across America respect our show. You know, that's the truth. You know, maybe we don't have the biggest bro. thing, but the boxing gyms, you know, go to the boxing gym They'll agree with some of the stuff. They'll say we're also idiots, but that's boxing. Boxing is the most hating ass sport. You go to any gym, you'll find a hater in the gym. So that just means we're a real boxing show. So if you don't have a hater in your gym, well, you're probably the hater, you know. But uh, <laughs> I mean, that's just real ish. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got to kind of wrap up here. But Ian, right, you're man. just awesome, bro. That was incredible.